about to come across one of the most extraordinary human beings I'd ever encountered, a religious convert with true fire in his soul. This is Brooklyn-born Joseph Cohen. Five years ago, Joseph left his Jewish family in the USA to set up home with his wife in a settlement near the occupied Gaza Strip. Joseph was a fervent and regular visitor to the Wailing Wall has conceded in interviews that he would, quote, come most days and knock my head against the wall. One night, Joseph was checking out a religious website. His life was about to change forever. I was in the chat room, and uh, a man came in, and many of the quote-unquote Israelis were finding him offensive. But the truth is, he was speaking the haq. He was, he was saying truth. And I... I spoke to this guy the whole night, and I couldn't sidetrack him. You know, as a Jew, you learn to be, try to be cunning and how to push the people in your direction. I couldn't push this guy anywhere. He was hard as a rock. Is there one overarching idea in Islam that really appealed to you, that actually sealed your conversion? The central idea would be that one perfect God that is flawless, and one deen, one religion, a perfect religion for all mankind not just uh, a special board of directors or a, a, their own country club, for everyone. He moved to live in Palestinian East Jerusalem, the start of a dramatic transformation. Joseph became Yusuf El Khattab. His wife and four children all changed their names and their faith. His Jewish family back in the States were not exactly bowled over. What are your present state of relations with the family? Talak, broken. Does that sadden you? Well, Islam forbids me to lie. I'll be honest with you, you might say I'm cold, but actually, no. I, I, grew, I grew up like a whack and key child, so it's not like a close-knit family. Yeah, I basically Jewish treated Jewish families, from my... Jewish culture, Brooklyn. You only get one set of parents. Yeah, it, it's true, but we were never extremely close. I was basically taking care of myself. My mother worked, and my father was gone during the day. And uh, we weren't that close in the beginning. What do you have in faith now that you didn't have before as a Jew? I have true belief. Why should I take anything you say seriously? I mean, you converted to a new faith on the Internet. Who's to say that in two years' time you won't be a Roman Catholic like me? We'll be both be going off to the Vatican to see the Pope. <laughs> this, we should go to the Vatican. I have a duty to go there to give a message of Islam to the Pope, too. But uh, you have to What would happen that? to you if you renounced your... I would be killed, and this is, this is one of the miracles of Islam. Why should you be killed? Why? Because it's, it's clear in the Quran, there is, no, there is no belief after disbelief. You can't go in and out, and every Muslim has warned this before they take shahada. Is this when people say sometimes the only way out of Islam is? Is death. That's, that's the fact. But still, this is the miracle. It's still the fastest growing religion. Knowing this, people still accept it. Christians, Jews are still accepting Islam. I'm not surprised no, it's the fastest growing religion in the world when the penalty for leaving Islam is death. Renouncing the message of Islam, the sin of apostasy, is certainly a serious business, but many moderate Muslims would balk at Yusuf's views on the death sentence. Their view is that faith is a matter of personal assent, and point to one of the Quran's most celebrated texts to make their point. Surah 2, verse 256, there is no compulsion in religion. Still, Yusuf's take on apostasy was the first inkling to me that his understanding of Islam was not exactly of the cuddly variety. Yusuf made it clear that he's not a spokesman for his local mosque, but further conversations revealed that his views were very similar to those of a so-called Wahhabi, the kind of hardline political Islamist that one has come to associate with Saudi Arabia. Just before I'd met Yusuf came chilling news. A cafe bombing in Haifa had killed 22 people, a number of whom were Arab Israelis. In the aftermath, it emerged that the bomber had been a young woman from the West Bank town of Jenin, and it made me wonder what Yusuf would make of it. 
I'm very proud of my sister, what she did last week. And inshallah, we have thousands more that are willing to do the same. Your sister was the suicide my si bomber. My sister in Islam, my sister in, in faith. And this is the biggest sacrifice that she gave. I mean, I've studied the Quran, I've looked at the Hadith, the sayings of Muhammad, and it seems pretty clear to me that women and children are declared as innocents. Isn't the strength now, more important? Who has more restraint than the Palestinians? I mean, who, it, it's almost a joke that somebody like the Jews or the, the Christians can come to us here and tell the Muslims that you have to have restraint after being beat up by guard points, after having me called filthy words in front of my kids, after being beat up, after being taken out of my house in the middle of the night in front of my kids, and they, and they tell me to have restraint. Yusuf is blessed with four well-behaved and talented kids. I raised again the subject of the Haifa bombing that had resulted in the deaths of several young children. Surely as a father, that would induce some serious second thoughts. But his answer was the most chilling yet. This is really the best blessing for them because a child that dies before 10 years old goes to Jannah. They're in paradise. It's a blessing to get killed on fast. Allah guides who he wants to Islam. It says very clearly in the Quran that if a Muslim kills another Muslim that he will not see God and that in fact he will be condemned to eternal, well, hellfire. Surely that puts him in a very difficult position yeah, but it's to justify what he's done. That's true, but it, it's intention. Nobody has the intention to go out and kill Muslims. And that Muslim Just is... Just use your common sense. Who's not, going to be on that bus? No, no. And the common sense is it's going to be mostly Jews. That's common sense. Common sense to any Muslim here is that we don't go on bus buses. We don't go on egged buses. Except the few that do. The exception. Do you believe in the concept of the innocent civilian in the state of Israel? Absolutely not. There is no, huh? there is no innocent civilian. Every one of them goes in the army. Every one of them votes for a government that oppresses. So there is no compromise. We have nothing to offer them. What can we give them? Both he and I claim belief in God. Yet it seemed we were living on different theological planets. On a final meeting with Yusuf, I wanted to put a couple of direct questions to him about his decision to turn his back on his family and his faith. Is this an act of self-hatred? I mean, turning your back on the past, you have no links with parents and family anymore. You, people could interpret this conversion as simply a way of almost reinventing yourself. Well, I think of it just the opposite way. We believe that every person is born into pure monotheism. Only our rabbis, our priests, our parents, or whoever it is, corrupted our ideas, our school teachers. So I just returned back to the, to the straight path after learning Judaism and being in their schools and learning their books, the, the filthy Judaism. You, you and, can't, why, why use that term? I mean, that's offensive, isn't it, to people? I'm not trying to be offensive, but uh, that's the fact. Meeting you has confused me. I admire your devotion. I admire the energy you put into your religion. But I am repelled by some of the things about children under 10 dying and going straight to heaven. Is it not the case that you crave this kind of certainty because of the psychological difficulties? No, not at all. I don't, I don't hate the Jews because of, you know, they're Jews. I'm not, a, I'm not a white supremacist. I hate them. I hate their religion, I should say. And because of this, we have a duty as Muslims, and because we have the haq, to fight munkar is the word in Arabic, which means evil deeds in any way, whether it's interest banking, whether it's pornography, whether it's money laundering on 47th Street Diamond District, this is our duty to enforce, and we will enforce it, whether George Bush or Tony Blair like this or not. This is our obligation to do. I wonder what you might think of me privately as a, as a Roman Catholic. You know, religiously, what I believe. I mean, we have a halak and a deb, we have manners in Islam, but you have to know the truth of what we say. I'm a lost soul. You're not lost because you're still alive. But, but I've got a few years to find myself. Yeah. Who says a few years? Maybe you'll die in 30 seconds, as will I. We should all die in the state of Islam. Is Islam going to take over the world eventually? Will it be the world religion? Is this inevitable? Inshallah, we, we're hoping so. But do you believe that will happen? Eventually, that will be. There will be no choice in the end. How will that happen? By, by dawah, by, how do you say? By Islamic propagation or the rifle. It's going to be either way, but it's going to happen. You sure? One hundred percent. I found Yusuf's views and his pathological certainty poles apart from Hassan, the Palestinian teacher, and the faith of other Muslims I knew back home.